appreciate you and everything that you do. Um, and thank you to Lottie for also organizing this and for being a part of this program too. Everyone is always so great to hear from you and see you. Uh, you are such a great promoter of Teleflora. And also thank you to Teleflora. I wouldn't be able to be here in front of all of you from all over the globe um, without their support and encouragement for the promotion of advanced education in floristry. I was lucky enough when I opened my shop that I was looking for basically kind of a business partner. And I happened upon Telflora and saw everything that Telflora was offering me as a business owner and decided that that was going to be a great step for my business. And for me and my business, it was really a sense of community is what Telflora gave me. It gave me the ability to have my point of sale system. It gave me the ability to have my web, it processed my credit cards. And also if there was anyone that I had to look to for questions within the industry or running a business, Telefloor was always there where I could pick up the phone and I could call somebody. And outside of that, going to other industry organizations and symposiums and conventions, Telefloor has always been there. And whenever I have questions, I've been able to meet people that are also in this great community of Teleflora. So I kind of welcome the conversation for all of you guys that are out there right now. Um, as we're going through our Zoom call, if you have something really wonderful that you want to share, I would love to hear it. Your great experience that you've had being a member of Teleflora and how important that is to you and how important it was to to grow your business or start your business, or maybe you were in business for a while and you decided to jump on to Teleflora and you're now with them now. I would love to hear some great stories. I, I think that's always fun to share. Um, outside of that, the web offering that they have through Teleflora, as well as the credit card processing, like I mentioned, those were two things that I always did use and we still use at the flower shop. And then also their containers. They have a wide array of containers that they offer, whether it's everyday containers or it's holiday containers. I know in my shop, we always ordered the Christmas holiday containers, especially Thomas Kincaid, and every year they completely sell out. So it is something that's super popular. You can get onto the Telfloor website as a member, and they have all of these services that you can look through. You can even go and order your flowers through them. So it's really a great program, and I would encourage everyone to check that out. Or of course, Lottie's on here. You could always reach out to her afterwards. I know that there's gonna be a survey at the end that you guys will be able to fill out any questions that you have. I know that there's a star rating, <laughs> um, but make sure you do that for her because that really gives her the feedback and that gives Telflora the feedback too, to know what kind of educational programs that you guys are looking for and if you enjoyed the program or not. But I wanna thank everyone for showing up today to tune in. Um, I've got some wedding inspiration to share with all of you. And then I also want to say right at the beginning before we get started, because I will just start going and talking, um, questions are definitely appreciated. So if you think of a question as I'm going through something, feel free to type it in. And if we're able to at that point get to the question, then we can go ahead and address that and promise no question is silly. So if you're thinking it, there's probably a chance somebody else is thinking it too. So just go ahead and chime in. And then the last, before I get going, I do want to give a little plug to my new book. Jody mentioned that I am um, a brand new author and I am. So this is my brand new book, Perishable Poetics. And it's 45 images, over a hundred pages, different inspirational flower designs and botanical names. I've got some sketches in here that I actually sketched out so you can see my hand. Um, we're gonna be giving this book away at the end. We have a special design word that we're looking for. So if, uh, if we see that word come in and you're the first one or you're the only one, then you'll be the one who gets this book at the end of our program today. We'll go ahead and announce that. So, we are in COVID small micro wedding world. And we all know that we are gonna be dealing with this throughout the end of the year. I think we're really gonna be dealing with this throughout next year too. And when all of this happened, everyone, I know at least in our shop and another shop that I work at, all the weddings, everyone, the events, the ceremony places just stopped. 
said, no, we can't have it. So everything just came to a screeching halt and our weddings ceased. And we weren't sure when it was gonna pick back up, how it was gonna pick back up. But I know that we are now starting to see that momentum kind of come around again. And I know in my shop, something that we are offering is we're offering virtual consultations. And that's very important to put that out there to your customers that you are offering virtual consultations. Some people don't feel comfortable coming into the flower shop and that's okay. We have to give them a little bit of grace or respect everyone's opinion on that. Some people don't feel like they're comfortable with people coming in and doing a consultation. So on the other side, they wanna do the virtual too. So it works both ways. And then also what we have realized is now we are not only holding the date or saving the date, which we have always done. We take a deposit to hold or save the date that goes towards the total of the wedding, but it puts you into the calendar. What we are now offering is a backup hold the date. So we are doing an initial hold the date and then they can pick a second date that they put a second deposit down to hold that second date. And that second date is going to be further out into the year, but we are going to hold a spot in our calendar for them, for that additional deposit. We are taking that additional deposit and putting it towards the first wedding if the first wedding does happen. Um, so that's something to consider if you wanna offer your creative business to people that you might wanna do that. Um, it seems to have worked for us. And it's a little bit different. We have never done anything like that before. We've, we've never even really thought of it. So because of this, it's a necessity that we have to offer that service now. And we're finding that people really are appreciative of it because we are thinking ahead. We are thinking about them. In the wedding world before COVID, the brides, the grooms, the families, they all really connect with you when you show them that you really have their best interest at heart. Whether it's saving money, repurposing items, or in this case, really thinking about how something may affect their day and how you can help them to look progressively at that and maybe tackle a problem before it even hits. So think about adding that to your, to your offerings or even marketing that for um, maybe your social media and putting out their offering hold the dates with a second hold the date. Interested? Give us a call. And that might spawn a little bit of maybe activity or even just a conversation, and that's good. So I'm gonna start as I go through, and I'm gonna talk about each section and um, kind of let you know the, the tips and the tricks. Everything that I'm gonna show you today for weddings is something that every florist can do. Some of it does look like it's got a little bit more of an elevated skill to it. How did you do that? Well, I'm gonna absolutely show you exactly how I do everything and explain every step. Again, if I get to something and you don't know how I did it, please just chime in with a question and I can go ahead and address that for you. So first I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna show you a very simple hand tie bouquet. And I will say for the weddings that are coming up, um, people are really going to be embracing creativity. It's not gonna be the ballroom with 350 people, with 35 tables, 40 people in the wedding party. <laughs> the, the big weddings that we really saw a great um, trend with, really, that was a big trend before all of this happened. Big weddings were huge. Um, those big weddings, as we know, are getting to be much, much smaller and condensed. But with the weddings that we had, um, they were canceled or postponed rather. And now they're scheduling another date, but they're not changing their budget. We found that their budget is staying the same, but now we're just allocating that money differently. So you're going to see that people are going to be spending that money but they're going to be spending that money on smaller quantities of items, which means bigger impactful pieces in some cases. Other people will spend less money. We just haven't seen that trend in our market. Or maybe brides that are coming in that just decided to get married, maybe their budget's a little bit smaller. So we'll talk about all of those things as we move along. But creativity, I feel, 
is going to be extremely important moving along in this year. So I think we're gonna see all this greenery, all these big bouquets, all these white and cream flowers. I think we're gonna see that kind of diminish. I, I feel we're gonna see more color. Color is gonna be the new white and yellow especially is really gonna hit on trend. So I'm gonna make a very sweet, buttery, yellow, creamy uh, hand tie bouquet for you today. And I'm gonna be using a natural flower support. And my natural flower support is a little nest of manzanita that's a bleached manzanita or it's a power washed manzanita that all of that dark bark is gone. And I just cut little pieces of the tips off and took bind wire, which is a paper covered wire and bound all of those little pieces together. If you guys are interested in seeing the steps to how I did this, you can feel free to send me a message on social media. On Instagram, I'm Jenny T. Floristry. And then on Facebook, I'm Jenny Thomason, A-I-F-D-P-F-C-I-E-M-C. But you can send me a message and I will put that up there and show you the steps on how to build this base here. Now I'm gonna be using all my flowers. You saw I took everything out of the vase and it's important when you do a hand tie bouquet that you separate all of your product. So I know I've got my roses here. I've got my yellow dill here. I've got uh, Narcissus, a variety of Narcissus, really beautiful kind of buttery orangey color. I've got some real oak leaves for the fall, some bleached Lunaria pod, some bleached fern, some buttery ranunculus, a Phalaenopsis orchid, yellow protea pin cushion, and some solid ego. So I'm gonna hold that natural flower support, which is my armature in my hand. And I'm just gonna start weaving my flowers through that. By the nature of doing that, that's gonna create my handle. So there's no need to put a handle on this natural flower support with these mandolinita branches. I used to, when I started doing this, I would build my collars or my armature, and then I would build handles onto it. So I had something to hold on to. I stopped doing that. One day when I was building these, I didn't have the wire to put the handle. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to do something else. Necessity is the mother of invention, just like what we're doing right now with our weddings and COVID and our new policy. Necessity is the mother of invention. So we just have to be a little bit creative about it. So I'll use just my natural stems and just weave those through in a spiral hand tied format. Whoop. And I'm gonna use one variety at a time. So I started with my Protea pin cushion and now I'm gonna to go to my rose, but in the buttery cream. And then after that, I'm gonna to go to my other rose. I've got that more like a peachy tone. Just so I can make sure that I'm balancing all of my botanical material. And this is just inspiration. Um, you could make this bouquet and not need to use the tropical flowers. That would make it less expensive. So the tropical flowers in this bouquet would be specifically the protea pin cushion and the phalaenopsis orchid. But you don't need to do that. You could just do roses and solidago and then just your foliage and that's gonna make it less expensive. Giving your brides options for this is very important. But some people really like the variety and variety is gonna stay as a trend moving forward but that's gonna be flower variety, not so much the greenery variety. And having unique flower varieties will let you kind of stand apart from your competition. And that's gonna be important too. I'll give you a little bit of a trick that I use for my color. Color is, is such a, a wonderful thing for our craft and for our industry. And there's a lot of secrets with color. 
Um, it takes a while. You could study color probably for your whole life and never learn everything about color. But my trick for bouquets, and you can use this, is I take a flower and if it has natural variegation or natural color tones in it, I would use that flower as my inspiration for my color palette. So in this bouquet, I do have a flower that I'm gonna be using. There's your hint, gonna be using, I haven't used it yet, but there is a flower that has all of these colors and tones in the one flower that I pulled all of the other varieties from. Because I figured if nature can do it and pull it together, then it is okay. So my one flower that I use that has all of those colors and tones is my Phalaenopsis orchid. It's got a beautiful white creamy, but then all the way in the throat of the orchid, you've got the peachy, you've got the yellow, We've got the green, and then it makes my whole bouquet kind of work. And like I mentioned, I'm doing a spiral hand tie, so all of my stems are going the same direction. It's important for the flowers, especially these delicate stems like this ranunculus. If you do a spiral hand tied bouquet, all the stems are nesting up next to each other in the same direction. So when you tie them down, you cinch them down, you're not going to collapse any of those stems. You're just supporting each other. And that's a whole nother class or lecture all by itself. But again, if you guys are interested, just send me a message and I can get you set up with the skills to learn how to do that. So already, isn't that beautiful? And that natural flower support, support where initially it was pretty much the whole thing, right? That's, that's what we saw. Well, now you can see that it is kind of gone into the background, but it's keeping all of my flowers in place using a sustainable material. And also it's something that they can keep afterwards. If you know the manzanita branch, it is super, super strong and it's going to hold up for a really long time. So if they're sentimental and they want to keep part of that bouquet, they're going to be able to do that. Or if they want to keep that part of the bouquet and let's say they're going to do a bigger wedding, they're doing the micro wedding this year, but next year they're going to do the big party. You could always say, you know, you could bring back in that natural flower support. You could bring back in that manzanita branch collar. And we can go ahead and reuse that for you for your party bouquet. And then they have that feeling that, oh, it's all the same thing, you know? It's going to be the year of intentionality. Intentionality meaning people are going to be very serious about making the decisions on what they want. It's all going to have a reason. Very sentimental about keepsakes, the things borrowed, things blue, you know the saying, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. There, there's gonna be a lot of attention placed in that. So again, let them know that you're thinking about them. You've got their best interest at heart. You wanna help make it special. So you saw I put in that oak leaf and now I'm putting in the dried bleached Lunaria pod. The common name is a money tree pod, but it's really wonderful. It's got little brown flecks in it. It's unique. Again, it's something that they could keep if they want, because it's a preserved product. And then I also have this dried bleached fern that I'm adding in. It's very delicate, very feathery, lots of movement. Great new material. I'm just going to create that for a little bit of a collar. And then my hand tied bouquet is done. That's something so quick and easy. You could even do that in front of your customers and let them see, oh my goodness, how beautiful. That's my, that's my bridal bouquet. And I finish off my bouquets always with, you guys saw me pull it at the beginning, 
This is a waterproof tape that I use. I use the waterproof tape because I find that it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna break like it would if I used wire. It's not gonna poke a hand like it would if I use like a zip tie or something. I just know that for me, it has always been incredibly successful. And I just wrap it around the handle a couple of times and voila, there's my whole bouquet. Look at, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, you've got, gorgeous. We've got some questions for you already. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Everybody's loving the buttery colors and with uh, less foliage, but, you know, really being able to focus um, on the color of the flowers and the textures. So thank you, that's beautiful. Isn't that great? I love it. Cool. Okay, so, so, yeah. A lot of questions already. <laughs> Strap in. <laughs> so um, the first question is, um, if a bride comes into you with um, the Pinterest page with the, you know, the small tight, um, you know, roses. How do you get them from there to doing something like that and, and taking their mind away from their, their really specific image on Pinterest to being something a little bit more creative and up to date? That is a great, great question. And that is really, that's something we all have dealt with, whether we're dealing with it now or we've dealt with it in the past. Once you start doing more unique things, your customers are going to see that. So once you get out there, I, I feel you're going to draw in that right customer because they're going to be looking for that. But um, the answer, my suggestion would be take her Pinterest page, tell her how beautiful it is. First of all, because she's got it set, she's got her heart set on it. So you, you have to, again, you have to make her know that you have her best interest at heart, right? And then I ask, let me see your dress. She brings out her dress. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. How are you gonna do your hair? Like, I wanna know all the details. Where's the ceremony? Now, if I've been enough places in my town, I know where the ceremony is and I know what the location's like, or where's the reception? Or if it's outdoors, cause it's small and it's gonna be at mom's house or something. I try to draw all of that information to give me keys to talk about something else. So if it's in mom's garden, you know, it would really be beautiful if we added a little bit of texture to your bouquet, in addition to your roses that are so gorgeous, but that texture is really going to help implement the place that you're at. But just kind of go through and try to pick up little pieces, but you have to encourage and you also have to support them. You can't just say, we're doing something different because <laughs> you still want the business. Uh, just, just support them and try to, try to work through it a little bit. It's the communication, yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a couple of people asking where you were able to source those dry, those beautiful dried materials that you've been using. Oh, so um, the Lunaria pod here and the preserved fern here are beautiful, soft, really soft to the touch, stunning. Um, I found them at a place called Agro, A-G-R-O in Dallas, Texas. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and somebody else is asking, they did not see the orchid go in there. So can you uh, <laughs> forget the orchid? <laughs> the orchid? Oh my goodness. Whoever said that, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I am going to put that in. Thank you. I just, I got to talk and you guys, I get so excited. I just get talking. <laughs> So I'm going to take my spiral hand type. Okay, you can see all the stems are going the same direction. So I'm not going to be crushing anything. I hold my spiral nice and tight so I can give it one nice, beautiful, solid edge at the bottom. And then I can set it down and I can put my orchid in. So that's a test if it's a good spiral hand tight. Everything is balanced and it won't fall over. Don't fall over. <laughs> So I'm going to use my cold adhesive. This is the honey colored kind. We get this kind in the States. You can get a cold adhesive actually that's clear um, in other countries, but we get the honey colored here. So I'll squeeze a little bit out and I did clip those orchids off the stem. So I'll take my cold adhesive and I'll just put it on the end, end of that stem where I cut it. That is going to like carterize the end of that stem and it's going to keep all the moisture in the flower. So I do that and then I can just attach those 
and nestle those in and place them strategically exactly where I want to. And I just got three. I don't need any more than that. It's not a big bouquet. But I'm going to cluster them next to each other. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna move on. Are you guys ready? You wanna go? Let's go. Yes, we have one other quick question for you. Um, are you seeing that mini bouquets are becoming more popular than corsages? Mini bouquets are more popular than corsages? Are they? Moms? Yes. I guess it's for moms. Um, absolutely. But really, I didn't even do anything that dainty here today, actually. But they are incredibly simple and small. Like if I was gonna make a mom's bouquet, off of this bouquet, I would pick like two elements, maybe three out of this bouquet to use. And I tend to pick things that are a little bit more delicate and dainty. So I might do a little cluster bouquet of this ranunculus because it's so soft and beautiful, paired with a little bit of this fern and then maybe a touch of the solidago or the dill. But I wouldn't make it big, not trying to be a bridesmaid, but yes, the mothers are wanting to not be what I hear, I don't want to look like a mother of the bride. <laughs> so they think they think the corsage, whether it's a wrist or a pin on, they think that it dates them. So they're wanting to be a little bit more trendy and modern. That's another thing you could just offer right off the bat. Mom, let's make you trendy and modern. Let's make a little bouquet. Mom will like you. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Jenny. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to move to the next section and we're just going to span it really slow so you guys can kind of see everything. Um, and then you can ask questions if you want to and then I'm going to go to another bouquet so feel free to kind of type them in. All right, so this is my um, section that matches that bouquet that I just did. So we're still in these buttery colors, the, the beautiful peaches. Uh, there is a little bit of blue that I've kind of brought into this, that darker color, just to give me a little bit of contrast uh, for everything else that we've got going on. And you saw the first bouquet, everyone can do it. It's super easy. This bouquet, everyone can do it as well. But at first I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the scene that we have. So again, micro weddings and their smaller venues, it's smaller spaces. What I have here is actually unconventional. It's not anything that you could go and find in a catalog right now. Um, it's actually home decor. <laughs> so these panels that are the background here are standing panels from the ground with this beautiful exposed wood that just comes all the way up and it's a flat top to them. So it's almost like a room divider, if you will. And we have three of them here, but I used two. So this is inspiration for me and for you for like the back of where the bride and groom or the bride and bride or the groom and groom would sit. So it could be instead of a big tall centerpiece on their table, because it's really intimate that this is just their beautiful background. Or this could be the background for the ceremony. And again, it's just room dividers. It's something that we have. The top on both of these is just long containers, long gold containers. They're almost like potting containers, like you would put your, your growing plants for the season outside. And I've laid Oasis in there. It's about third of a brick long oasis. So I cut the top off. I didn't want to extend it off the top of the lip of the container because I wanted everything to stay a really low profile. And to mimic the crossing of the branches for the room divider, you can see up there my orchid or my roses. I do have a couple orchids in there, but my rose stems and my lysianthus stems 
and my ferns, all of that is crisscrossing. It's not a low, tight, cut, compact hedge. It still is a hedge, but it looks a little bit more gardeny. It's something that we really haven't seen so much, but now people are, are drawn to that. It's, it's different. They're wanting something a little bit different. So anyone could do that. I, again, I didn't cut the stems of the roses long. They're almost the length of the stems themselves, but you make sure that you do a good insertion, couple of inches, make sure the foam's nice and soaked. I did this earlier today and it never has seen the refrigerator and it's doing beautifully. So again, there's just two pieces on top, sitting on top that room divider. We've got our roses, our lisianthus, and then everything else we used before, the, the ferns, the natural oak leaves. On the bottom, I have two side bases. So these side bases would be inspiration if this was going to be a ceremony setting. Those would be my accent pieces. Or if this was going to be a dinner setting, those could be the side pieces for where the couple would sit in the center. Again, I pulled in my orchids, my roses, my saladago, everything else, all the textures. So we know that everything is very fluid. It coordinates with each other. And it's very easy. These are in water. There's no oasis in these vases. There's a cluster of roses. So I focused on making my clusters. And then there's a cluster of orchids. So think about doing that. It's just very impactful when you look at it. Instead of polka dotting things, we're putting them in clusters. It makes it look really modern and fresh. And I've kept those orchid stems nice and long so they have a nice movement to them. It's a very elegant kind of arch. And then the bridal bouquet, that's what I would call this. This is a hand-tied cascade bouquet. Um, it is a larger bouquet for sure. I have to hold it up so you can see. Um, I wanted to show you the back of it. So I have this beautiful grape wood root that goes all the way through. Can you see that? It's a great piece of wood, but you'll see from the back, there is no additional wire holding that piece of wood into this at all. I, again, just used the wood piece by itself and started weaving my flowers in, in a hand-tied fashion. And that is going to keep everything nice and secure. Uh, and then it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, it's, it's in there. And then they have something beautiful to keep afterwards, whether they're going to display it in the home or they want to bring it later to have another bouquet, another bouquet made or purchased. So I have in here again, my roses. I've got my peachy rose, my buttercream rose. This is the dill. You see that? It's like Queen Anne's lace, but it's yellow and it smells divine. And then I've got my peach hypericum, my blue, blue viburnum berry, spray roses. That's that novelty narcissus that we talked about earlier in that buttery and peachy tone. And then I've got a couple of protea pin cushions tucked in here. So if this was going to be the bouquet, well, now we wanna repurpose it. So we're gonna repurpose it as a tall centerpiece or an accent piece. So I have my spiral hand tied bouquet and I can put it into a larger vessel. Now this just has water in it. Again, there's no oasis at all. And I've got two pieces of my manzanita. I can put my bouquet down in here. Can I have assistance just for a second? Thank you. Put my bouquet down in there. Jenny, there are a couple of us here are wondering how heavy that bouquet is. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, it's not light. <laughs> it's the biggest one that I made today, but really that grape wood is what makes it a little bit, a little bit on the heavy side. Um, but I would say it's probably easily five pounds, but you get your workout throughout your wedding day. Yeah. So it's in there at an angle. Again, this is thinking about how we can kind of put the money a little bit further. We're going to reuse this as an accent piece. So then I'm going to take that manzanita branch and just kind of nestle it in the back side.
And then I'm gonna accent with some loose stems. I've got some solidago and some of that fern. And what a great addition. You would never know that that is a bridal bouquet and it's so contemporary and fresh. So offer that for sure. And then the last thing that I wanna show you for this section is um, a low centerpiece that is a container that you can make. So if you don't have access to get your containers or go to the store or if the wholesale is closed and you have some tools laying around, you can make this. So I've got a long piece of wood. This is a two by four. And I had taken a big drill bit and drilled down into the two by four and made holes. And then that is where I put my larger water tubes. So I'm gonna bring this closer to show you guys. You see down in there, the water tubes inside the two by four, again with my new Lunaria pod and then my Manzanita branch. So it's just a, a unique, take on what a centerpiece could be. So I've got some of my flowers that match everything else. My Narcissus again, so give those guys a nice little cut. My water tubes have water in them, so I can just place this down inside. We'll just balance our color and our flowers throughout. And this is going to be a great time for you guys to ask some questions. This design will probably take me about maybe five minutes or so. So I can always address any questions that you may have, or I'm good at talking too, so I could, I could keep going. We have a couple of questions for you, Jenny. Um, so uh, Anna Day is asking, do you have um, an armature attached to the grapevine root to hold the flowers? That is such a great question. You said that was Anna Day. Hi, yes. Anna. Such a great lady. I miss you. I hope you are well. Um, she knows me. <laughs> I don't have a um, handle attached to the grapevine root to hold my stems. However, there is a little bit of a piece of wire that's on the bottom part of the grapevine root that I attached that I was able to take my flowers from underneath and weave into that chicken wire to get my natural cascade. Because uh, the natural cascade is a little difficult if you have ever done a hand tied cascade. It's a little difficult to do if you don't have any support. So I did do that to give my underside flowers that come up the ability to cascade down. And if you guys are interested and you want to see the close up of that when I take the bouquet apart, I can certainly take a picture and share. I am an open book. I'm here to help. So send me a message. Jenny, um, Letitia Burkett is asking, um, how did you insert the vials? The vials, that's a great question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, the two by four is just a solid color piece of two by four. And I've taken a drill and a drill bit and I match the drill bit size, the one that you push down and it cuts into the wood like bigger diameters. I match the drill bit size with the bottom of the water tube. So I knew that the size was gonna be the same and just drill down in and made sure I didn't go all the way through, but a couple, a couple of, of inches or an inch or so, so I could put that water tube down in there it's a two by four it's two inches thick right so we don't want to go two inches down but an inch maybe an inch and a half before you put that in and you can secure the water tube if you want with a little bit of cold adhesive or if it's snug enough you don't even have to use the cold adhesive just be mindful of your materials you don't want it to be too heavy or topple over thank you jenny you're welcome. One of your uh, fellow education specialists, Tim Farrell, has a question um, from him. Um, he says, the room divider makes a great base for the beautiful flowers. The transparency of being able to look through is very effective. Can you talk 
a little bit more about the transparency in floral design and how it's becoming more popular. Oh, Tim. Ah. Asking that question. I love that. Um, if anyone knows me, they know that I love transparent designs that create a lot of space. So what I mean by that is something like this, if you will, that I'm doing now, that it is see-through, there is breath, that's what I call it, there is breath to the bouquet. So it literally is like, <gasps> there's air in there, so it's transparent. Um, it gives it a sense that it, it's almost a little bit magical. It's not so compact. And it is definitely on trend right now. Um, but I, I hesitate to use the word trend because I think that once people see it and they appreciate it, it's going to be something that they expect. It's going to be hard to go back to that really tight kind of compact. I say that tight and compact design is almost when we're kind of introverted. We're very protected. We are in a fetal position, like, oh my gosh. But when we feel like, oh, we can breathe finally, like our wings are set free, then um, we realize that's really, that's really the way to enjoy the design. So transparency with design is very important. And I think it shows a level of comfort with the designer when they're able to actually do transparent design. They know how to do not just a it almost two dimensional, but I know it's three dimensional, but it's almost two dimensional because it's so compact. But when they realize that they can really go three dimensional all different ways, they've come to a certain level in their design. So I think it's very, very important. So very simple down here, um, transparency design. There's a, a lot of movement with my branches for sure. Um, there is a level of depth for my color because I did put that dark magnolia leaf on the bottom. And then our beautiful candlelight, because of course we need candlelight for weddings. Textures are really important right now. So I use that with this whole section. There's so much texture, visual texture. You see the texture before you can even feel the texture. Um, so pairing that with things like microfiber, like rugs or throws or pillows in these smaller venues and giving your, your guests um, a sense that they're really being taken care of and they're like in a homey environment. And this really does kind of give that sensation. So I hope you guys like this section. Beautiful, Jenny. Thank you. We, we have a couple, we've actually had three people asking or, um, all about your two by four. Um, what is that covered with? That's a great question. Um, and I wish you guys, I wish I could go deep into all of this. We would need hours um, that I would be able to kind of teach you how to do all of this stuff because it's things I've picked up traveling and, and meeting and exploring and allowing myself to just create. But the two by four is actually the, that and the water tubes are painted first. Um, there's a great gray color that I used uh, to paint them. Not black, but it kind of recedes like black does. I wanted to give a little bit more warmth to it. So the gray page is, is over all of that. Then I have the magnolia leaves. They are preserved and dyed magnolia leaves that I have layered and glued to the outside. And then um, I also have that manzanita, the, the bleached or power washed manzanita that is laid in there and little bits of balloon area pods. There's definitely some layers going on. Uh, I love to use layers or there's the, there's the final touch as I like to say sometimes, but that's a great question. Thank you so much. Thank you. So my next section, and I know we're getting close on time, so I'm gonna try to freeze through this a little bit. Um, my next section is really important and I use this in my flower shop and I've used it for years, but I think this is a great tip for virtual sales as well as in-person sales. In my flower shop, I have a consultation room and the consultation room changes sometimes seasonally. Most of the time it changes twice a year. So I mean a big change. We have a section where there's a ceremony set up and it's always way modern. So people know what we can do. We can always do the, the stuff that we see. If they can see, we can go beyond their expectations. So we have a very modern ceremony section and then we have three vignettes of different reception sections. So those morph kind of all the time with trends and colors or containers or styles. 
Uh, I also though, in addition to that, have a section where I have pre-made bouquets. And not everyone has the ability to do fresh bouquets and have them sitting around because it's just not practical. But having silk bouquets, and that's what I have in the store. I have silk botanical bouquets in different sizes. So for instance, this would be a medium bouquet. This would be a small bouquet. And then this would be a large bouquet. So if they are online, they're able to look at you or look at a staff member that can hold the bouquet and say, I really like that size. If they're inside the store, I have a full length mirror. This is after we talk about their dress. I wanna know what the shape of the gown is. If it's a very sleek gown, then we can go with a smaller bouquet. We wanna show off the, the shape of, of the body. If it's a bigger gown, we can go with a little bit of a bigger bouquet or even a long cascade bouquet, depending on the train length. I use all of those elements to guide me towards the suggestion of which one is appropriate for the person. So for instance, this might be a great bouquet for someone who wants to do a very petite, small hand tied. Some people say this is more of a bridesmaid size. I want to go up a little bit larger and I want a little bit more of a substantial bouquet. So this would be a common bride size for me, but some people would say, mm, that's still a little bit too small. I really want to go even larger. And that's when we would go for an extra large. Okay, some people want to go bigger than this, <laughs> which we always say we can certainly do it, but this gives them a great idea holding it or seeing it to say that's the right size for me, rather than I've been asked before, well, how many roses will be in that bouquet? How big would that be? This has completely eliminated that question for me, and actually it has upped my sales on my bridal bouquets because where initially I might have thought this bouquet is a great bouquet for her. I think it's a great size. And I would have left money on the table because she really wanted this bouquet. So it's just about educating your customer and then letting them know, again, you're in their corner. You wanna make sure that they get the right bouquet that what's in their dreams and make their wedding day fabulous. Any questions about the bouquet sizes? No, we don't have any questions about the bouquet sizes, Jenny. Okay. Thank you. So my last section, we'll go slow so you can see. Oh, wait, we do have a question. I'm so sorry. Before you do the big reveal. <laughs> oh, I wish we had a drum roll. Um, <laughs> um, we have a question um, from Maria. Uh, she's asking, how many inches would you say per size? Meaning... How much bigger does it go? Um, well, I would say this one, and I didn't measure them, but just I'm thinking about from retail world of going to the greenhouse and buying plants. I'm trying to think of like the size of the, the plant pot. Is that weird? I love it. <laughs> um, so I would say that one's probably a 10 inch and that one is definitely like a 14 to 16. And this one is just, oh my gosh, 18 to 20. I mean, it's, it's, a very, it's a very large substantial bouquet, but it's really light, you guys. These spiral hand ties, if you pick the right product, it's fantastic. But it can be, it can be unique to you. If you make your samples at the shop, you can go ahead and measure them if you want. Um, sometimes I steer on the side of caution in that regard for brides because I don't want the bouquet to be made and then it show up and then a ruler gets pulled out or something, you know, and it's, oh, this is 11 inches, not 12 inches. So um, you could just give approximates. Thank you. Okay, last section. Drum roll now. <laughs>
So this is an example of, uh, again, we have the same budget, but we have a smaller space to decorate, but we still want to have something fabulous. So this is larger impact pieces that we can use, whether it's for the ceremony or whether it's for the reception. And you saw me just lay the bouquets down. So maybe that's the bridesmaid's bouquet and the bridal bouquet. Um, in addition to our side accent pieces and our very, very large dramatic centerpiece. So simple. Everything is clustered in these side vases. These vases are in water. There is no foam to them. So it's just a matter of layering your materials, clustering your flowers, and picking really good, vibrant, rich colors. Again, I, I think that the white is not going to be as prominent. I think color is the new white. We've seen this color palette for a while, but I did add a little bit of depth to it. There's a little bit of a fuchsia, there's a little bit of a lavender, there's a little touch of a blue in here. Um, I have this large piece in the center that kind of takes on that moon gate feel that everyone was getting married in front of. This is another level to that. Um, the container, if you will, or the structure that it's built on was made by an iron worker. So it's a custom piece. There's iron workers all over the place. You could always reach out to one and say, I need something made. And you would find it's probably not as expensive as you think it is. And you can even sketch one of your own designs, which would be incredibly unique. The vases on the side are glass vases. They are in black. And I started with the Nandina foliage. So Nandina foliage is this foliage here. And it comes with a variegation of color to it. I started with that in both of those vases. So that is my natural flower support grid. So that's what I put everything into sustainable products. And then from there, I added my smoke bush, my delphinium, my roses, and my lilies. But they are clustered. So you can see my delphinium is here. My roses are here. My lilies kind of work their eye there for a nice visual movement throughout the design. And then the smaller accent pieces, same idea, but just cluster of delphinium, couple of roses, cluster of the lilies. And then my large piece in the back here, I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer again, if you don't mind. So I have dried hydrangea, which is all that green. I have spray roses. I have carnations, I have orchids some millet, hanging amaranthus, and then the background of all of this is plumosa. And to hold all of that in, it is chicken wire, and it, the plumosa is woven into the chicken wire. There's no glue on the plumosa. I just wove it in and out, kind of like you were doing a stitch. And that held the plumosa, because as you know, plumosa has little thorns to it, so it, it held it nice and snug, which is great. And then all of my other botanical material is cold adhesive. So I have my plumosa, which will dry that way. And then I have my dried hydrangea, which is dried. And then there's a couple other elements in here that will also dry and be preserved, such as the millet and the hanging amaranthus. This could be something that would be used again for the party next year because other elements are still gonna be able to be okay. They will preserve naturally on their own. So I made two very contemporary bouquets and that will be the end of our Zoom today, but I just wanna share them with you. Um, both of these bouquets, I use the same exact products with the addition of something different, just one thing different in each one. So this one is a spiral hand tied bouquet. I love the idea of spiral hand tied bouquets, but they just take a different take on everything. They look different. So this is um, red dogwood that I did a tatami method, which is just a weaving method in between each branch. And if you're interested, again, send me a message. I'll be more than happy to shoot a video and show you. But I just wove in, I have the agonis and the smoke bush, the millet, the scabiosa, the roses, the carnations, delphinium, and phalaenopsis orchids. I just wove those in there for a really different, unique take on a spiral hand-tied bouquet. And this probably isn't something that you're going to be able to ever sell to a bride.
but this might be something really fun to make for your consultation room in addition to your other bouquets, like those guys that you're gonna show the size. Maybe you have something that's really special and unique that you're gonna show your design skill or your creativity. Remember this next year, creativity is going to be key. So that's one of them. And then the last one, is another spiral hand tied that I did. But instead of the red dogwood, I used uh, equisetum for my background. But then the quantity of the flowers are the exact same that I did in that other one. So my roses, my carnations, my delphinium, my millet, and my phalaenopsis orchid. It's got great movement. It's a nice, beautiful line, some delicateness from the agonis for a nice element when they're walking around. Really fun and just yummy, scrumptious, great colors. And I encourage all of you to unleash your creativity, kind of step out of the box because now is the time to take advantage of just seeing where you can go, seeing what you can offer your customers. They're going to be so open to it. And I thank you so much for taking everything today and sharing everything with us. Um, Again, if you have any questions afterwards, reach out to Lottie or reach out to me. You can do my Facebook, Jenny Thomason, A-I-F-D-P-F-C-I-E-M-C, or uh, my Instagram, JennyT.Floristry. And then also one more shout out for the book, Perishable Poetics, uh, Manifesting Emotion Through Contemporary Floral Design. We're going to be giving this away. And I want to thank Lottie. I want to thank Jody so much for your guys' support and for being a part of this. And then I also want to thank Teleflora for your continued support for education. Really, I wouldn't be here without you. And I'm so grateful that I've been able to travel around and teach and do lectures and workshops because you guys support all of us in doing that. So thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Um, that was am amazing, like, really incredible. Thank you. We have got so many questions and there's, it's physically impossible that we're gonna be able to get through um, all of them. And so I will um, take your names and, and we'll get something going uh, via email for everybody who's asked a question. There's lots of mechanics questions. Uh, a lot of people are really curious about the, um, the Phalaenopsis orchids that you put on the bouquets uh, right at the very beginning and um, wondering how long, you know, how soon before the wedding do you put, do you attach those um, and how long they'll last, that kind of thing. Um, do you have a quick second for us to answer that question? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I do my orchids for my bridal work, I actually will take them and hydrate them the day before the event. So I will pinch them off of their stem and I will put the seal of the cold adhesive on that place of the stem where I pinched it off to carterize again. Because remember, as soon as that dries, it locks in all that moisture in that flower. I put that in a container that's layered with tissue or paper towel that has no dye, no lotion, nothing on it, just plain paper. Put that flower upside down very gently and spray the back with water and then place it up face up, spray the front with water, lay paper towel over that, spray the paper towel and then cover that. Put that into my cooler or somewhere cold. If you, you don't have a cooler and it's a basement or a garage, that's okay, just as long as it doesn't get to freezing. And then you're able to bring that out the next day and hit that place on the stem where you carterize it, hit that with another bit of glue. And that bit of glue is gonna be used to actually secure it into the bouquet. I do that process right before I need the bouquet. So before I, been, I would even do my ribbon wraps and then I would put my orchids on, give it another spray of water. They're gonna rehydrate that way. And then it will go out onto the delivery to the event. Other than that, how long it's gonna last on that bouquet, it depends on the elements in which the bouquet is gonna be in. So if it's a really hot day and they're outside or if it's really windy, you have to take those things into consideration. Um, but it should last all day in a normal weather environment. I do offer all of the brides and grooms at our shop a water bottle if they are interested in misting their flowers throughout the day. Uh, we do put a little small price tag on that just so we have the water bottle there for them, but the water bottle has never had anything in it but water. And we make sure it's nice and filled and it's chilled and they put it in their 
beverage cooler <laughs> for the wedding day. So then we just say it would be really great if you could appoint someone to be, okay, be in charge of the bouquets. So in between photographs, when they come back and they put the bouquets in the box, that's a whole nother talk about the box that we offer, but they put the bouquets in the box and then they can spray them again to keep them nice and fresh. So it should last all day if you take the proper steps. And you, would you use finishing touch or no? Well, there's finishing touch and crowning glory. If you are going to use one of those, that's something that you wanna use right at the end. Um, you don't wanna use that when you're storing them the night before because it seals them and it locks it in. You just wanna keep using water for as long as you can. But then right before you leave, you can do that finishing touch um, before you take it out to the, to the event, yeah. Fabulous, thank you. Um, we will definitely um, address your questions probably via email or on our Facebook page. But um, before we announce the winner of your book, um, I wanted to say thank you so much, Jenny. I am inspired. I am always just blown away by your work and, and the amount of detail that you put into everything. So thank you for being so inspirational and for giving us hope and, and a little bit of, um, you know, creative soul feeding um, in the meantime. So thank you. Um, thank you, Jody. I think she's um, gone now, but hi, Jody. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, to the North Texas Unit for sponsoring today's program. Um, I also wanted to do a little shout out for our YouTube page. Um, if you would go ahead and uh, subscribe, we're going to be posting a recording of today's um, program on there. It's Teleflora Design Education. And also we've got, um, you know, various classes and programs coming up. So follow us on Facebook. I always post um, all kinds of information on there. So um, please follow us. And without further ado, so the special word that we were looking for in the chat and the Q&A was, drum roll please, minimony. <laughs> so uh, congratulations to Patricia Macha. So you will be receiving that book. And uh, thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you. And thank you for joining our community. We will see you soon, everybody. Take care and be well. Bye.